What the f*** is going on? I like to party. Jesus, honey, wax much? This is Unwaxed. Get in, Lizzie. We're going shopping. With Sophia and Sistine Stallone. Did we just become best friends? Yep. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Unwax Podcast with your favorite sisters, Sophia and Sistine. <laughs> you guys, we're still in our pajamas. It's just one of those days. It's, it's one of those days. No kidding, For Miami. Christmas. I know. Shocker. Well, you were just saying that you're on this whole health journey for the next year. Yeah. Funny enough, I had a little stint. You know how sometimes you have this idea or this goal that you set for yourself one random morning? And then you say, you know what? I'm going to dedicate because I want to see results in two months. I'm going to do it. I had that last week, right? Hmm. And I said, my goal for the next year is to be slim thick. Bear with me. Excuse me? I'm built like Slender Man naturally, right? It's well, fine. Wait, can we just say that um, when she was in high school, she got bullied and people called <gasps> her the prey manis. Let me <laughs> go a step further with that story. <laughs> Here's context. I have the body of SpongeBob SquarePants. Fine. There's no curvature there. It's just square. More no, more like No, it's it's lean and long, but it's just square. More like a seaweed stock, like the ones that just you know, just like long. A piece of seaweed. Yeah, just sure. like long and skinny. In school, in high school actually, not even middle school. These people are grown enough to know this is not okay. I got made fun of a lot. I don't know why. Um, also, I was very underdeveloped, but that's another story. These guys made an Instagram account. I cannot remember the name of it, but I still have screenshots. One day I'm coming for all of you, okay? One of you was a redhead. I remember your name. I won't, Andrew. I remember you. Oh, God. <laughs> all right? And there they made an Instagram account. Yeah. And they, every single day, would find a photo that I posted. Maybe I was in a bathing suit by the pool, really happy. And they would Photoshop it next to something they thought I looked like in that photo. One being a prey mantis. It was really bad. I mean, one At being- the time it was bad, now it's funny. One but. being Slender Man. So every day I would wake up on my phone, Instagram I had for about a year now, and I would just see this harassment. It was torture. So yes, my goal for the next year, the story comes full circle. Yes. I said, I want to be one of those girls because I follow all these TikTok, Instagram girlies that just have their workout routines so jam-packed, perfect, and they have the best legs and the best butts, and and they really put in the time. Yeah. They track their macros. I don't even know what a macro is. They track their protein intake, all this stuff. So I went to Target the other day. I got the pre-workout. I got the protein powder they use. I said, okay, I wrote a schedule for myself, how I'm going to lift, how much I'm going to lift. I did it for one day, one day, and I said, you know, it kind of hurts my tummy. So I stopped. Yeah. Oh, okay. See so that, you know, what's really frustrating about you is that you make the excuse of having your tummy hurting for everything. If you're nervous for a date, if you can't have this certain protein powder makes your tummy hurt it's like everything makes your tummy hurt you make my tummy hurt it, exactly an excuse everything makes your tummy hurt you so, know what else makes my tummy hurt hmm. love which is what we wanted to talk about today like how butter, good of a transition was that you can't say it's a good transition I know, but come on. um yeah butterflies in your tummy that does make sense so sistine and i <laughs> last week technically it's going to be last week by the time we shot this we wanted to talk about something that we've always been very proud of, which is giving great advice about dating and love. Not saying, look, we're not saying that we're examples of, you know, figuring it out. But I will say, because we don't take our own advice, but we have a little sister. Yeah. And Sistine and I said to each other, you know, I personally, being the oldest, I wish I had an older sister or two that went through the things that Scarlett's going through that can talk me off a cliff for yeah. so many of my decisions that I could have avoided, that I could have made better with just, you know, the proper instructions. hundred percent. We have to give credit to Scarlett for this because she listens to all of our episodes. Thank you. And she said, the one thing I feel like you guys are missing is you talk about stories, you talk about dates, you talk about your life, but you never give clear examples of what to do when. Mm -hmm. If this happens, how do you handle it? And she goes, you guys give such good advice. 
why don't you do that? So we've decided that we have a whole list of listener questions. I haven't even gone through them yet. And we're just going to help you guys out, answer some of these questions. And again, I know what you're thinking. Sistine, Sophia, you're both single. Why would you be qualified to talk about relationships? I agree. Listen, everything we're saying is our opinion. Please take it with what you want. I've read you don't a have lot to agree. of romance books. Sophia is a rom girl. And the characters girly. end up with each other in the end. So I would argue that we're actually <laughs> the perfect duo to do this. And we have been classified in our friend group as the therapist. Yes. Okay. Yes, that's true. Sophia is overly romantic, overly into love movies and books and music. And Sistine is the one that was going to give you the hard truths. And she doesn't beat around the curve. So if you're doing something yes. wrong, she's telling you. And you're I think wrong. I've crossed one too many F boys in my life. So I know how to handle these characters. Mm -hmm. So we're just gonna start reading some off. Yeah. We'll see what happens. We'll see what I got. Th these are all questions you guys have asked. So this is nothing that we've just made up. And I really like this because we haven't done anything like this and dedicated an episode just all about love. And it's great timing because it's going into the new year. So maybe you can take these little nuggets. And maybe you. we can too. Yeah, truly. I'm gonna rewatch this episode. Yes. <laughs> okay, so we'll start with the first question, and it is. Is it wrong for me to have guy friends if I have a boyfriend? Mm. See, I already the, know how I feel. <laughs> there's the correct answer, and then there's the answer that I feel about, yeah. and I think it's the same one. Yeah. Of course you should feel secure enough in your relationship that gender of friends shouldn't matter. But if you're like us and you're a wee bit crazy and a wee bit suspicious all the time, I do think there – is a limit to too many girl or guy friends. Mm -hmm. What do you think that number is? No, I don't think there's even a number. Maybe two. No, this is what I think. Is It's the same thing with you. Personally, I think it's fine that you have a guy friend. Absolutely, I do. Because Sistine has really good guy friends. I don't personally have really close guy friends. I've just I've always been a very much a girl's girl. Um, and I know that if Sistine had a boyfriend, she'd still want to be friends with some of her guy friends that she's close with, but... There's a boundary. If yeah. your best guy friend becomes the confidant that your boyfriend should be and probably wants to be, then I would say that's where the issue lies. So I would really make sure you communicate that with your boyfriend or just make sure you're aware that what if he was talking about all his feelings and all of his things that he would probably want to talk about you with with a girl. I would also argue I think the only reason that I have functioning guy friends for as long as I have is because there was a strict boundary set in place since day mm -hmm. one. Sorry, I don't believe that if you cross that line from friendship into something more, wink, wink, there's really no putting the toothpaste back in the tube there. So I think that's the pretty much the only way you can have a functioning yeah. friendship with a guy. I do also want to say that my ex had a lot of girlfriends, all of which hated me. For no reason. So, yeah, I didn't love that. And I think that if they're your cheerleader and your supporter, then absolutely you guys should all be friends. But I think everyone's got a little bit of agenda, a little bit of jealousy. So you really got to it's, it's suss it out. Yeah, it's tough to. It's very specific for each relationship. Yeah, that's our opinion. Okay. okay. Why does he keep coming back and then leaving me on red? Yeah, and open. Like, I guess what they were saying is, why does he keep coming back, you know, talking to you? And then the moment you respond, he goes away. Because shank, shank, shank. people <laughs> want what they can't have. Yes. And I'm telling you right now, oh. I've been in this exact situation for the past seven years with one person. <laughs> oh my God, you know who you so are. Oh. Every time I call him, he doesn't answer. If he calls me and I answer, he has nothing to say. If he calls me and I don't answer, he gets mad at me. Now I say, what do you want? What are the games? And I've realized, do I actually want to spend a single minute with him or without him even thinking about him? No, you want to be with someone that is unshamelessly going after you, mm -hmm. is not afraid about it, isn't trying to be too cool for school because at the end of the day, like... You know, I, I always you don't have the time. For you that. know what I always envision 
And just to like to end the question, because obviously I think that was the best answer you could have given. Period. You've, you've seen, have you ever seen the movie My Best Friend's Wedding yes. with Julia Roberts and um, Cameron Diaz? And oh, that? I forgot the guy, but he's super handsome. Hugh um, Grant? No. Different, different 80s, 90s guy. So basically there's a scene where the bride, Cameron, is running. The groom is running after her. And then Julia Roberts is chasing him. And her best friend basically says to her, Who's chasing you? If there's all these people chasing each other, who's behind you chasing you? So if you're looking back and there's no one there, stop texting that boy. Move on. Okay. How do you cope with the pressure of finding a partner just turned 30 and haven't found my person? Oof. Okay. Because we, I, because <laughs> I look, I'm 27, so not too far off from you. And I have these same pressures, I think. And I put on myself a lot. And I read a lot about this stuff just to kind of reinforce the fact that things happen in life for a reason. Mm -hmm. There's a reason why certain relationships didn't work out. There's always a path. There's a reason why you're not with someone right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, look, if you're putting in the effort, great. Like keep putting in the effort. Mom says all the time, dating is a job. You put in all your time and all these other things. And if you're not putting in time for dating, then, you know, things probably won't work out. But you shouldn't feel the pressure because what? I'm going to stop you right there, Sophia. You cannot give advice to someone about feeling pressure about not being in a relationship when you feel the pressure all the time. I just said I always feel the pressure. I watched this old woman on TikTok. She's fabulous. I'll link her name below. She's constantly giving advice for people in their mid-20s, early 30s. And I think when you're in your 30s and you're in your early 20s, you're always around those people, the same people your age, and you see them moving on in life and progressing in life and you feel stuck because it's always around you. It's all you think about. It's all your friends. It, it's, it's constant. Now, I watched this old woman and I feel like I can take her advice the most because she's lived it. She's lived a long life. She's not in her early 30s anymore. She always says, the one thing that I regret at this age was I was constantly putting this pressure, fear, and timeline on my life. And now she's like, I'm 90 years old. Looking back, it was the biggest waste of time because it panned out exactly the way I wanted it to. If you want something enough in life, it's going to happen for you. So just don't put a timestamp on it because the only thing you're going to be doing is driving yourself insane. Also, speaking from someone who's actually in their late 20s, because Sistine doesn't get it yet. She's in her mid-20s. Hey, don't be jealous. Um, when I was feeling this pressure, I actually, this sounds so random, but if anyone knows who Sarah Blakely is, Sistine knows I really respect her. I love her. She's the founder and owner of Spanx, and I've watched her master classes on how she built her empire. But one thing she said when she was talking about a relationship was that she was in her early 30s and she had this massive growth of a company and she said the one thing I never put pressure on myself was finding love and I focused on myself becoming the best I could be focused on my work focused on my friendships and she said she just had this gut feeling that it just would happen eventually and at 34 she met the love of her life they have four kids together and they've been married ever since mm -hmm. so it can happen mm -hmm. it can happen later in life it can mm -hmm. happen for me it can happen for you Ooh, this next question is tricky. When is it appropriate to sleep with someone you're seeing that it doesn't scream easy? I think this is so personal to each person. I think three. You think three dates? Yeah. I, if I'm just going to give a, if you guys just want a blunt answer from me, I think three dates is pretty much I would a sweet number. Three to five. In my head, oh, in my God. head, this is how I always thought. And there's, of course, the opposite end of this but I always thought the longer you wait the more respect they'll give you and now that I'm getting older I don't necessarily agree with that because I've heard stories of people the first night they're going home together and they're married with kids mm -hmm. so it really doesn't matter I think it is more important of a question to ask why are you questioning whether this person will respect you or not if you did the certain natural thing mm -hmm. maybe don't be with that person then yeah. Period. Um, <laughs> how do you not get attached so quickly? I think I'm pretty good at this. 
Um, because this thing gets attached really quickly. I'm like Velcro. <laughs> I choose Velcro. Oh. I, you know, I'm actually a slow burn. People think that because I love love so much that I am someone that was going to dive into like yeah. the next relationship. I'm pretty good at separating, I would say, yep. my feelings from someone to emotional to whatever. And I would say for myself, I'm, I think it's good to keep your guard up. And that's what really helps me not get so attached so quickly. I don't, try immediately to fantasize about this person 24 seven. If I, of course I get my nerves, like nerves happen when he texts me, I get butterflies if I'm going on a date with him. But I think that until I feel a moment in the relationship where I go, oh, this one's going to be different. Mm -hmm. Until then, he's just your friend that you find attractive. Like this is just someone you're trying to get to know. You cannot read too much into it. Like even if you're yeah. kissing, even if you're doing stuff, I mean, at the end of the day, those are your choices. It's your body. It's your life. You can't think that this person has any control over it. And that's really what it is. I'm not going to lie as well. You kind of have to weigh the option that they might be doing the same thing with someone else. So until you've got this person locked down, mm -hmm. you shouldn't get too attached because, again, it's it's still yeah. early on. If you start catching yourself fantasizing about what the future is going to look like, stop. Think of dates as like doctor's appointments in this way. No, hear me out. Hear me out. Okay. <laughs> yeah. This is kind of how I envision it when I'm in the beginning stages of not trying to get attached too quickly in the sense that my life goes on. I still hang out with my friends. I still do my job. I don't have my mind swarmed with, oh, I need to go on this. Mm -hmm. What is he doing? What is he doing? I think of it as, oh, there's an appointment set, a date. I'm going to go on it. We're going to enjoy our night. And then I move on. And then oh, it happens again. Oh, we're texting a little bit more. And then that's when you start to fall for someone. Just, yeah. you know, just separate the the heart a little bit from what it really is there, you know. I agree. Yeah. This person said, I just ended a four-year relationship. Should I start on dating apps and which ones? No. Yes. No. First of all, it's called let's healing. talk to the girl that is on the apps and the girl that won't be on the apps. Yeah. And I just went, uh, I guess it wasn't four if years. If you but. feel like you are ready to put yourself out there again and you want a fast pass to dates, absolutely. Now, I can't guarantee you're going to meet someone worth value, sorry, on these dating apps. But I do think dating apps are fun for me because it's sort of like Dating is like a, a workout, right? You have to rework that muscle and you've been in a relationship for four years. So going back out there and seeing the different types of men or women that you're going to encounter, like it's a whole new world because you're so used to one thing for so long. So I think, yes, if you feel like you're ready and you just want to have fun and get dressed up, why not? But I will warn you, and I think this is what's really hard getting out of a long relationship with someone that you probably loved really deeply. Yeah is that you come to this kind of cruel realization that these guys aren't looking at you with the love and affection that probably your ex did. And that's going to be really trippy because you're so used to one way. Yeah. And um, we saw that on a show last night where the girl had ended a really long relationship and she was sleeping with this guy and she goes, I just miss, you know, the affection and holding of someone that I was, you know, that loves me, looks at yeah. me lovingly. And, yeah. you know, if you're just doing it to kind of just get back out there, absolutely join a dating app. But I also think it's really okay to, you know, pause for a couple months, like six months and, you know, be with your girlfriends. Yes. I have uh -huh. no advice on which one to join. I'm still figuring that out myself. Yeah. I have never used Bumble or any of them. So, okay. He cheated on his girlfriend with me. He told me he was single. Oh. Should I tell her <gasps> I found her? <gasps> yeah. Um, yes. Hold on. Oof. First of all, <laughs> screw that guy. Yes. Second of all, I'm sorry that you got lied to and that you're now put in this situation because any way people look at it, it could seem like you're the bad person in the scenario. You're not. And that really sucks. If I was the girlfriend, I'd want to know. I will tell you this. Every time I've heard a scenario of the other woman who found out that he was mm -hmm. like found out or she was sleeping with someone that was in a relationship that had told the partner, they've always gotten the respect after. They don't get yeah. shit on. Truly. They yeah. get actually the thank you so much for telling me. Answer. And look, it's, it's up to her if she wants to continue that relationship. But I think you know, you might be saving her from something really bad. Damn, I can't even imagine if that was my... <sighs> my advice, burn the house down. 
Next question. My significant <laughs> other. <Metaphorically. laughs> no, my significant other wants me to be more vocal about my feelings. How can I learn to speak up? Ooh. <gasps> Ooh. Okay. How do I start this? I don't have this problem because I feel like I'm almost actually, you know what? That's not true. I think that don't you feel like this? We are such vocal people, but when it comes to being in a relationship, it's really hard to say what we mean and mean what we say. You know, do you know what I'm saying? We're trying to almost hide how we feel about things. So it just doesn't. Through a lot of self-reflection when I was going through that, I always found myself asking, what about me speaking my true feelings to this person that I like or even love? is so scary. And I think you need to address that with yourself first. Is it a fear of rejection? Is it something that you haven't healed from in the past? Mm -hmm. Because there's nothing greater than showing vulnerability in a relationship. It's only going to make you guys stronger. It's only going to make the relationship stronger. Learn to speak up. I think maybe try something that makes you feel comfortable and it's sort of a baby step into it. Maybe if that's saying you feel through a letter... So you don't physically have to say the words. Mm. Well, how else would you I mean, start into it? You know, it's tough. And I, I'm i more of a very blunt person when it comes to things. I think if it came for me speaking on my emotions, I'm definitely someone that just goes, you have to just rip the bandaid off and go, hey, I really need to talk to you about something. And I would want no judgment. Just listen. Mm. Let me speak. I could be going on a word vomit and a word tangent and not really know what I'm saying and speaking in circles. But let me just get to my point. Mm. And... I think sometimes you don't need to be responded to. You just need to be heard when it comes to feelings. I used to make my ex hide under the covers when I told him how I feel. Just so he wouldn't look at me. Wait, what? Just so he wouldn't look at me. Because I'm like, I don't want to see your face. I just want to speak. He's like, tell me. Yeah, he would. Or he'd put a, his face in a pillow. By the way, it worked. It worked. And I got out what I needed to say. Okay, tell him to crawl under the bed. Yeah. And then you put a mask on and then go. <laughs> tell him to close his eyes, duct tape them Perfect. Up. Oh, God. Um, any funny stories about being rejected? You're looking at me like I've got I, all the stories. I don't. I'm trying to think if I have had <gasps> any funny oh stories. Oh God, this is so bad. Um, we probably just <laughs> I can't think of one right now. I um, have to say, humbly, <laughs> this year I've been ghosted more than I've ever been in my life. Thank you. The award for most ghosted. And I want to apologize to all the men I've ghosted. Doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel good. No. Um, funny stories about being rejected, though. You know what it is? I don't want to. I'm not going to say that this is. I have a good story. Oh, okay. I was going to say I'm not acting like I don't get rejected. I just don't usually put myself in the position of potentially getting rejected. Like I don't usually. If that makes sense, like I don't. <laughs> I'm not sure if this is a rejection story, but this is along those lines. Years ago, when we were living in LA. Sophie and I got invited to this young Hollywood event. Oh. You know the story. You know the story. Yes, I do know the story. And we got styled for the event. It was the worst styling Don't I've ever Don't know why the stylist put Sophia in a shimmer mermaid tight dress <laughs> with a giant pink <laughs> a giant fur coat. <laughs> like I was like I was Macklemore. No, it gets better. Pink. She put me in parachute pants that were black and yellow sequent <laughs> flowers the whole thing and then a sheer striped black and yellow top she i looked like a bumblebee you looked like a gumdrop i looked like i rated goodwill <laughs> like i just it was bad it was horrible anyway i had just broken up with my first boyfriend at this time i think i was 19 18 yeah. and i just joined raya so I'm on Raya, whatever, no prospects. We go to this event and I see one of the guys that I had matched with on Raya at the event. Obviously, I don't say anything because I'm so insecure and I look like a bumblebee. So I'm just minding my own business. He notices us, doesn't say anything. Fast forward the next day, he messages me on the app. You looked so beautiful at the event last the night. Bumblebee outfit. I would love to take you out. I said, the man wants the honey. Amazing. Let's go on a date. He picks me up. You want to know what he said to me? I just couldn't stop staring at you in that 
pink fur coat and the sequin dress, I said, <laughs> mm, what do you mean? Because I was clearly wearing black and yellow. <laughs> I looked like a bee. And I said, that, no, I was, that wasn't me. And he goes, no, you had this, the fur coat and the, <laughs> the pink little dress. little dress. And I said, no, sir, that was my sister. You took out the wrong sister. Do you want me to call her? We can make a little and swap here. And that was here. the end of that. Yeah. Funny enough, we ended up going on a few more dates after that. <laughs> yeah, but. <laughs> so but. Because it wasn't rejected. Well, that's all I say. Rejection is God's protection. I burned the pants. Okay. Next one. Is it you or me? I can go. How to stop getting the ick. I get the ick so quickly. I remember a story where Sistine got mad at me because there was a guy that was so nice. This is years ago. And um, we were getting along like a house on fire. And um, I went home and Sistine goes, you should go on a date with him. And I said I couldn't. And remember how I said that it was because he wore flip flops? <laughs> it's so dumb. To be fair, he lived near the beach. <laughs> yeah. I yeah, I know. It was like the dumbest excuse ever. And I was See, like, oh. that's he the example. If your ick is something as dumb as flip-flops, then grow up. I'm sorry. Grow up. I mean, just that's like no reason to not. Of the flip -flop, okay. You know? just... But that's no reason to write someone off, right? Yeah. It's the same bullshit as if we say, oh, you're a Capricorn. Can't date you. Like, that's just not nice. But yeah. if it's something... I would say hygiene wise or something that really just is a deal breaker for you. I'm so sorry. Once you've caught the ick, it's irreversible. Yeah. 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 You can't stop. But if it's something stupid like flip flops, it's, you know what it is. Deal is, with it. This is, I think, the worst thing to think about. People have icks of you that <gasps> you don't even realize. What do you think my icks are? I don't. Oh. oh. <laughs> What? Oh, every time you laugh, you go. <laughs> <laughs> I just did it again. It's not even bad. I just thought it like you going like this all the time. Um, I think that's it. Wait. Oh, there's more. Um. Actually, yeah, that's pretty much it. I think. Okay, next question. <laughs> Do I have any X? No, you're perfect. See, you no, have say something to me. No, you have X, but I can live with them. And that's the lesson here. <laughs> How to ask a girl out that is too shy. I don't know. I don't know. How to ask a girl that's too shy. Okay. Um, um what I would do, what I would do. Oh, I know. You know she's shy, but you're probably liking her enough to notice little things that she likes. Maybe it's reading. Maybe it's dinosaurs. I don't know what shy girls like. It was a joke. <laughs> what are you? But what are just they, like a classic casually nerd? start conversation with her about things that interest her. So then she opens up her walls a little bit. There's more comfortable banter. This is one of those things. Shy girls are things you have to chip away at a little bit. It's going to take some grafting, but. They'll eventually cry. I also think if you don't know her personally and maybe you've seen her from afar, a really good way is to use social media because <gasps> it's not a direct face to face. It's something kind of a little bit more on the side where it's not as in your face. Also, I'd like to say this. I was very, very, very shy growing up and no one asked me out in high school because I was so shy and quiet. That doesn't mean I didn't want to be asked out. I think... You never know. Sometimes the shy ones are the sneaky ones. Mm -hmm. And I think every girl thinks that's a huge compliment and that's a huge form of flattery. See, maybe you think she's shy, but maybe she's just quiet. That's the same thing. It's kind of different. <laughs> it's kind of different. My boyfriend and I have been together for over a year and there's no honeymoon. We're fighting more. What can I do? I don't want to break up. Okay. Let's oh. break this down. My boyfriend and I have been together for over a year. So honeymoon phase is gone and we're fighting more. What can I do? I don't oh, want to break no. up. We should use the advice we just recently gave. You know what's so funny? I always feel like at the six month mark and at the year mark, that's when Things get the worst heavy. fights happen for yeah. me. Well, I, yeah, it's when... It's when the honeymoon phase is in and then the rose color glasses are off and the two of you have been with each other day in and day out and it's where the little icks develop and it's where the things that just, you know, would piss you off if it was your sibling mm -hmm. and you can get away with it are just happening now with someone that you're really comfortable with. 
And we gave this advice the other day, and this actually worked. This worked. So what we basically said, because we can kind of do it together, um, we said that when these little bickers and fights happen constantly, because when it happens, and I had this too, at the end of a relationship, sometimes, it's not for everybody, but sometimes anything that they do just irks you. They don't text you on time. They they avoid messaging you when they're out. They, they're breathing. They're yeah, Ugh. just anything. They could they could just look at you the wrong way or make a comment about mm-hmm. your outfit. And it even if it's not intended to be bad, and vice versa, mm-hmm. where maybe they're doing something or they feel like something from you. So it becomes this back and forth. And the point of it is there's a lot being said, but nothing being said. Yeah. And what there only needs to be said is exactly how you're feeling. It kind of goes back to the first question that we just had. We told this person, you guys are constantly having these little bickers and going in a circle, but you're not actually finding a resolution here. So we told this person, be the bigger person, go up to your partner, sit them down, and be very clear and concise when you say, let's just take a breather, not break up, let's take a breather right now. I'm going to say... Everything that is weighing on me, mm-hmm. everything you do that kind of bothers me, everything that I feel is not making this relationship as strong as it should be, and I don't want you to interrupt. Then you're going to say all the things that I'm doing mm-hmm. that bother you. For example, one of them would be, I want you to text me when you get home. Or one would be, you know, every single morning, I want a good morning text. Things like that. And when this person called us after, they said that literally changed the entire mood, the entire energy. Because I think a lot of times in relationships, you feel so strongly about your opinion, but you often don't notice what you're doing to make the other person upset as well. I think there also comes a lot of insecurities the longer you're in Mm -hmm. a relationship. And it's hard because you're, it's not long enough in the relationship where you want to verbalize those insecurities, but it's not short enough, Mm -hmm. you know, it it just becomes this whole melting stirring pot of emotions. And I think at the end of the day, when you have a partner and when you're having this sit down conversation, talking about everything that has just been bothering you, you just want to be heard. You don't want to be judged and you don't want emotions tied into it. They can respond, but when, if you're hearing it and you're getting a response or you are responding, make sure you remember this is how they're feeling. This is not them accusing. This is not them. Unless you're doing something that is really bad, I'm just saying usually it ends up just being something where people are just not being straight up with each other. Mm -hmm. And I swear to God, I know everyone says it, communication is key. And it really is that blunt of it. Just talk. Also, if you don't want (laughs) to break up and you want longevity for the relationship – you need to get to a place where you're comfortable enough to have the harder conversations in mm-hmm. order to move on. Yes. Okay. Best first date tips. How to handle a first date. Tips on how to act. Okay. Wow. Well, physically, bring a small perfume. Hold on. Let's just, before we even get there to perfumes and little makeups and whatever, first dates, I would consider us to be connoisseurs at them yes. at this point. We're basically the Albert Einstein. I've seen every type of man behaving me in every type of way. Mm -hmm. I've done some foul things on first dates, I will admit. But the best dates that I've had, they all have one thing in common. They ask questions. And I think a lot of the time, I even used to do this, I'd go into dates so nervous. What are we going to talk about? What if we have nothing in common? Someone told me this, and I've used it ever since, the one thing that people love to talk about the most is themselves. Mm-hmm. So if you find any lull in the conversation or if you want to seem like you're interested in them, just keep asking questions. You cannot go wrong with that. Yeah. Okay. So my tips, normally when I go into a first date, because I get really nervous and I tend to either freeze up or talk too much. I have like little tricks I do before I go into date to make it kind of feel better before I go into it. Mm. I kind of turn my nerv- nerves into excitement. So I'll like make sure I smile before I like even see the guy. Like I'll kind of like smile, think about it, like, oh my God, I'm going on a date. So the, by the time I see him, I'm already kind of smiling and I'm kind of in a better mood. It's almost like faking it till you make it. And then also little tips if you want to just like feel good constantly. Buy a mini hairbrush. I bought one of those foldable ones. I have a little mirror in it. Good keeper. We're in the car. You got a little mirror. Two, mini perfume. 
doesn't have to be the same perfume. Just has to be in the same family. Mm -hmm. Vanilla perfume, vanilla mini perfume. Do it. I swear to God, there's no better compliment than a guy telling you you smell good. And by the way, guys like a good smelling woman. Typically, vanilla, pumpkin flavor, chai, things that are a little sweeter. They do like sweeter. I don't know why. Birthday cake. For some reason, they don't like it too strong. They like it just comforting and warm. And then three, what was my last one? I had one in my head. I'll pick up on number three. Okay. I actually talked about this with my therapist the other day. So if you don't listen to anything we say on this podcast, but this piece of advice, it's from a licensed therapist. I was telling her about how I was going on dates with Mr. Friday, Mr. Saturday. We all know them. Mm -hmm. And I was saying how excited and nervous I was and I just want them to like me and what do I wear and how should I do my hair so that they like me and she said I'm gonna stop you right there my whole attitude before going into a date was how can I present myself in the way that I think that they'll like me she said I want you to do something different this time play your favorite music make the getting ready process enjoyable and fun because at the end of the day It's fun. You're going to meet someone out. It's a good time. If it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. But you need to ask yourself this question that I'm starting to do. Instead of saying, does he or she like me? Do I like them? Do I want to continue seeing them? You are the prize, baby. You are the prize. You need to go into every single date with that attitude that they're lucky to have a few hours of my presence. We're going to have fun. If it doesn't work out, whatever wasn't my Good person. Story. Exactly. Yeah. I love it. Thanks. I love her. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> what are the signs that the relationship isn't worth fighting for? I'll tell you the biggest sign. And I learned this when I watched a, this is actually a really good YouTube video. If you ever want to watch um, this man who's a divorce attorney talks, he's in this black and white video. I need to get the name of it. I'll probably put in the link because I loved learning about this. Um, And he talks about his cases and what he thinks about marriage or relationships and what he thinks has the chance of working out versus like what didn't work out. Like he, it's really good. And he's worked with the most high paying divorce cases ever. So Mm -hmm. he said that one of his clients was in a relationship and he asked them and there he was, they were getting a divorce and he asked the woman because he was representing her and said, what was the moment that you realized that the relationship was done? And she said, this is a very botched version of how it actually is, but this is part of the essence of it. She said that he every morning would always make sure that her granola was refilled. Even if it was getting to the bottom, it was like in this clear container. He would always just look at it and not even have to ask and just always refill it for her, right? Every morning, he'd write these little post-its too for her when he was leaving or whatever it was. And she goes, the day I realized that a relationship, even after all these fighting, he'd still do it. He'd still be that person there consistently. The day she knew that the relationship was over was when he stopped filling the granola stop doing the letters stop doing every little things that he used to because he stopped caring and Mm. it's the moment you realize the relationship isn't worth fighting for is when you realize that that person just doesn't care it's almost like they don't fight with you because they don't care to fight anymore Mm -hmm. you know you're just tired you give up it's it's the giving up part and I think that she realized in that moment that he just didn't have anything left in him to keep the relationship going Damn. Right. I was just going to say do a Venn diagram. That's always helped me. I think, you know, when you're (laughs) contemplating that idea of ending a relationship with someone, it's very confusing. Your head just is clouded with all these different thoughts and feelings. And I love them, but they did this. And I can only think of the good times or the bad times. I always find it best when I put pen to paper. And when I realized that I had no more fight left in me, was when I put a list of all the things that I cannot live without it, that this person gives me and then all of the things that pretty much keep me awake at night. And when I saw the cons list was drastically longer than the pros list, I said, okay, all the things that he's giving me right now, I'm actually able to give myself. So it's not worth it. It's exhausting. I just realized one more thing. Sure. That you probably have the same thing with me is another sign of knowing that the relationship should end 
is what your body is telling you. <gasps> right? So this is what's crazy is that <laughs> we were ugly no, at Sassine, the end of our relationship. What do you mean, I Sophia? A, I had styes. <laughs> I was in such <laughs> shambles towards the end of my relationship. I had styes. When I was called like a goddamn ogre. <laughs> I had literal styes, you guys. I couldn't even blink. I was a mess because it was coming. What did you have that was so bad? So no, I'm. T- I I had a bunch of things. I had stress rashes all over my stomach. Which, by the way, I've never had stress rashes. Yeah. Rashes all over my arms. Um. UTIs is another sign that people get a That's lot. That's a big one. Um, I had a consistent headache and I couldn't sleep. I got night sweats a ton. Like I wouldn't have any stress, which was really Your random. body's I, literally saying, yeah, no, we don't I, even want to be in this were, relationship anymore. There were nights anymore. where I would be totally fine. Like the relationship was good. Nothing yeah. was going wrong. But in the middle of the night, I would wake up and my Hives. clothes were drenched. And that mm-hmm. was crazy. So when your body physically is with them and you realize you're doing these like eye twitches like your cortisols are high then get out i also just thought of this other one um maybe you weren't considering this person that you're fighting for to be your end all be all but if you were i gave this visual to someone that was contemplating breaking up with the person that they thought that they were going to end up with and i said okay Close your eyes. Picture you're in the delivery room with your first child and that guy or girl, I'm assuming we'll say husband, and the husband is there with you, right? And you have your precious newborn that you just labored 48 hours for. And you look to the right and you see his family your new mother-in-law, and you have to hand away this newborn to this part of the family as well. How do you feel? This person said I'm out. <laughs> Can't do it. Because you also have to remember, like, you're marrying all that. So if that's something that tickles your fancy, go for it. But that's a good that's a good visual. Um, <laughs> you seem a little triggered by that no, one. No, I'm not. Um, okay, this I can do this one. Um, advice for dating in college. Okay. I dated in college. Um, Scarlett's currently dating in college, which is great. And I, we both actually had really good relationships in college, I would say. We found two guys that were just awesome, mm-hmm. awesome to date during those years. And my advice is this. College is like a cesspool of people that are just hooking up with each other. It is crazy. Everyone is in their late teens, early 20s. No one's taking anything seriously. Everyone's you're going to class. horny. Yes. You're, you're basically just, you know – it's like a giant slumber party on campus 24-7, especially I went to USC. It's the row at USC at the time that I was there. It was <laughs> it was wild. I have stories there that I could probably share one day here, but oof. My advice is this, and I heard this. I told Sistine, I heard this um, on a reel the other day, so I'm not taking credit for thinking of this quote because I think the best thing in college, when you're looking for a steady relationship, a steady one, because as you know, as a girl – when you're talking to guys that are in college, they're not really taking anything seriously. I heard this quote, I think that kind of goes well with it. And someone told this woman, stop looking for a firework and start finding a fireplace. <laughs> you got what I'm saying? Yeah, just... So my point... <laughs> I thought, that was I thought all... you were going to go somewhere so different I with thought this. this was going to be a lot more profound. Oh, God. Someone's Wait. asking about college hookups no. and you're like, no, she's be a the date. fireplace. She wants to date. And I said, no, I, this is my point, is that a lot of guys in college are going to give you the butterflies, the fireworks, the rush, and they're going to call you. They're going to ignore you. They're going to hook up with you. Then they're going to hook up with their friend and then they're going to sleep with you and then leave the next. It's crazy. So if you want that, absolutely go get it because I know a lot of girlfriends of mine did that. But what I loved about dating in college for me, and I know for Scarlett, was that we found the one guy that wasn't the person that was the craziest, the loudest, the... I do have to say, through seeing it, not experiencing it, the first two years of college are pretty much just fun, dating, whatever. Junior, senior year, people start to slow down. So that's when you really... That's when I started to... Well, I was exactly. sophomore, yeah. So my, oh. But 
You're so no, but my, beyond my your time. No, but my point was, was like my ex at the time in college was like my fireplace. He was my comfort zone. And I think that that's what you really need to look for. You don't look for that guy that is like standing on, on like doing the, a keg stand. Maybe he's a fireplace too. Who knows? Maybe he was just a little bit boozy that day. But uh, what would you... <laughs> I really had no idea where you were going with this answer. But isn't that cute, kind of cute? Because we're always looking for the guy that's lotus, but we want to find the home, like the cracking of wood. And but I would also the, argue the you're not going to find that in a frat house. I mean, Scarlett did. Yeah, but... I did. Forget, forget it. Forget it. Just just don't. Listen, hard. if you're a firework or a firecracker or what'd you say? A fireplace? Cracker jacker. <laughs> a fantastic. Cracker jacker. Okay, Sophia. All right. <laughs> What would be a way to let someone go, specifically in a toxic relationship? Here's what's funny. Mm. When we are breaking up with people, <laughs> obviously we are the ones doing it. My dad would always say, um, never do it in person, always do it on the phone. Which I don't agree by the way, with. By the way. I don't agree with. Sly was a dog for every that. Time. Because <laughs> by, the way, by the way, Chris, every time. Listen. We've we've actually had it's like every time we'd had to do it on the phone and then they get so mad at us we had to do it. No, it's so it's bad. really it's really bad. It's really bad. <laughs> what um, horrible advice. Do it on the phone. It doesn't matter who it is. Because then you never, you can just hang up. <laughs> yeah, right? Exactly. If they start mouthing you off, hang up. you just hang up. <laughs> they can't, they just say your piece and you hang up. They can't backtalk you. Okay. <laughs> Block their So that's like, one way to let someone go. You. That's one way to let someone go. <laughs> Block. Block. <laughs> Call them. Say your Change job. your Block. social security. Change your address. Change your name. And just disappear. Text them. <laughs> just write it out so you won't. By the way, yeah. I'm really bad at verbalizing. I once, oh my God, when I was 15, I broke up with a guy. We went out for two weeks. It's fine. But I called his home phone, his landline. <laughs> and his dad answered. I was like, hey, oh, I remember this. can I talk to Henry? <laughs> and then he was like, I'm so excited to see you. I was like, yeah, listen. And my mom was like vacuuming. She's like, can you keep it down? I'm like, mom, no. what's, what's one minute? I'll yeah. tell you the best, the best, the best I'm on the phone one was when uh, Sistine, she. Oh God, what else did no, I do? No, 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 no. It was, I was ending it with someone. Um, this was like three years ago. And it was, remember I was on our, it was, I was in a, the kitchen. You recorded me and oh. I could not verbalize what I was trying to say. And he literally, you hear him on the other side of the phone going, uh. I don't get it. Like, what are you trying to do right now? Yeah. Saying, Context, these are like three to four days. Yeah. Oh, these are not yeah. like people that we were seeing seriously. Okay. But a way to let someone go, I was watching this video earlier today and this girl was very profound. She said that you need to ask yourself certain questions in your relationship. And then that sort of determines whether you want to continue with this person or not. One of them was, and that really stuck out to me. Are you in love with them or are you in love with the potential that you put on them or who they can grow to be? And if it's the latter, how do you do it? You just have to find neutral ground. I don't like doing yeah, things. Don't do if it's it in toxic, your, don't, don't do, do it, it in, in his apartment. apartment. Don't do it in don't. your place. It gets bad vibes. You don't want to do it in your place. I also just think it's... You know what we even said the other day? Sophia do? and I went on a walk. I said, let's go sit on this bench. You know what she said to me? Hmm, this would be a good breakup bench. <laughs> <laughs> and let me tell you why she said that. We were on the West Side Highway near the water. But far. It was quiet. There was it was no serene. One there. And then you guys can literally just split. It's after true. That. Someone can just walk further downtown. <laughs> someone can just walk uptown. It no, was it was a beautiful place. scenery. It, it could it could calm the nerves. Okay. But a toxic relationship. <sighs> Public. I just, yeah, my whole concern with a toxic relationship is if you're going to break up with someone, your safety is the most important thing. And I know I hate to bring it there, but that's why you want to do it in public, in a place that you feel safe and all eyes are watching. Always have your girlfriend on the phone or someone ready to go in case you need them. What to do if you're getting mixed signals? What to do if you're getting mixed signals? I've been on this recent kick of just... Um, opening my big fat mouth and saying exactly what the hell is up. And before I would just let men confuse me and then I'd spiral even more and try to do what they wanted or try to play their game as well. Now I'm just so straight up and I'll just say, what are we doing here? Remember 
a few episodes ago, I asked that guy, I said, what do you want from me? And he said nothing. Fine. Rejected. I, I took it on the chin, but at least I got my answer and I can move on. Also, also, I don't believe in mixed signals. Everyone knows what they want. The mixed signals is just a delay of the inevitable. That's so true. They know what they want. If I'm giving mixed signals, because I've, by the way, because I was dealing with kind of a situation ship a couple months ago mm. where I think I was giving mixed signals and I knew exactly how I how it was going to play out. So I had to be the one to say, hey, this isn't going to be what this is. Wh whoever side it is, just ask the question or say the answer. That's and it true. sucks and it may hurt to hear, but would you rather be playing chess for the next four years with someone who isn't ready to commit or would you rather just run the 60 yard dash, get kind of breathless and then you run it down the goal and then you win and the goal, the finish line, the goal. You had me at the <laughs> beginning of that. I had, I had it in the beginning, not the 60 yard dash. Is that even the thing still? Sophia. I know I used to do the 100 yard dash in high school. <laughs> oh. How to survive long distance. And this is the last question, y'all. How to survive long distance. I did it for a Don't. year. Don't. Sorry. Is that your personality? That's the first thing you need to ask yourself. How to survive long distance. I Hold would email on. Elon Musk. I'm talking. And create a teleportation device. Stop. No, I was giving advice. You can't make stupid jokes. This is serious. But you didn't do a long distance relationship. I did. But I'm telling you <laughs> my... Reasoning for never doing a long distance relationship. Oh, okay. You need to ask yourself Am I the type of personality where I can be away from my partner for weeks, even a month, two months at a time, and feel secure, not worried, feel just as love and affection by them? Or if you're like me and I need to be coddled six out of seven days of the week, I can't do it. So I think if you're the type of person that can handle that great teach me yeah well so I did a long distance relationship it was my first time it was across the country so of course you know I will tell you this that is one of the hardest things I've ever had to do in a yeah, relationship truly good. um because I am like sustained and at heart I love to be with the person all the time but what worked out definitely was setting a routine of communication when it came to FaceTime it was yeah. making sure that we were telling everything to each other in the morning, everything to each other at night. We also had to have those serious conversations a lot more frequent because a lot of things can get lost in the mix. I was going to say, there's a lot more bickering. A lot more. Because you're not able to physically be with the person and to see their body language or give yeah. them a hug or. I'll, I'll tell you, there was a lot of bickers because of something that someone said and it wasn't really what they meant or verse, vice versa. Like maybe mm -hmm. I said something that he interpreted wrong and I was like, oh, that's not what I meant. And I would just say that that the time that you do get with each other, my biggest recommendation is don't overload it with a hundred fun things. I know that sounds weird. I think in the beginning it's really fun to visit and then do a hundred fun things with each other. And then you have this like go, 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 mm -hmm. go mentality. And then you go home and you're exhausted. I think the best way to know someone is just being with them 24-7, maybe doing nothing. Because then that really shows you. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. And sometimes but I like, think like the only way to survive a long distance relationship is constant communication through texting or calling pretty much almost all day. Yeah. Because that's what how much you would talk if you were in person all the time anyway. Yeah. And then that just avoids the what if, the unknowns. The I think also having an end to the long distance yeah. like at least having an idea of this is going to for both ends you both want to come together at a certain point mm -hmm. i think if i knew that that would just be a really nice you know peace at mind yeah going. also this isn't forever get spicy on the facetime Ooh, i was gonna say send photos Meow. never send photos we don't know where the cloud goes the cloud is somewhere it's definitely not in the sky i didn't <laughs> going to tell you that out <laughs> We love you guys. We hope you loved our love-filled episode. Please subscribe to our YouTube. We have Unwaxed at Instagram, TikTok, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, five-star reviews. We love you. We'll mm -hmm. see you next Tuesday. Bye. Bye.